Hi, I'm Rebecca, founder of the Dry Eye Company in Pulsebo, Washington. I run the dryeyeshop.com and dryeyezone.com websites and a series of Facebook groups for people who use scleral lenses. Today's session is part two in my series on preservative-free saline solutions for use with scleral lenses. This video is aimed mostly at patients, but it may well also be useful for contact lens technicians and optometrists. So today we're going to be reviewing four brands of preservative-free salines. We're gonna look at them in terms of type, as in which ones are buffered, which ones are unbuffered. We're gonna look at the sizes, as in total volume, and we're gonna look at the package features, which are bottles, which are single-use vials, what the droppers like, how they're labeled, and so on. First, I wanna just briefly give you a little background information. Preservative-free salines are confusing, especially to new users of scleral lenses. You will not find them in the contact lens section of your local drugstores. That is unexpected and unintuitive for patients, uh, at least those who have used other types of contact lenses. Most people will have to buy their saline by phone or on the internet unless their doctor stocks it for them. Uh, another thing that's confusing about them is pharmacists generally don't have the answers when you have questions. They're not familiar with the brands or the usage. And last, uh, in some cases, your lens provider may not have all the answers either. Ideally, every scleral lens provider would know all the options, they would know all the differences amongst them, they would recommend something specific for you, and they would give you not just a starter kit when you give, get your lenses, but also a piece of paper with product names and where to buy them. But that's not always happening, and so at the Dry Eye Shop, we field a ton of calls from new users who were given a pair of lenses and a handful of Atapax or something, and uh, when they ran out, they went to the drugstore, couldn't find what they needed, and promptly got confused and frustrated. So that's what we've been trying to help with by providing as much information as possible on the options and how to find them. So let's get started. First, we're going to look at buffered versus unbuffered salines. The only thing I'm gonna cover here is which is which. If you don't know the difference between buffered and unbuffered salines, I'm gonna encourage you to watch my separate video on that topic. It's the first one in this series. So as you can see, the buffered ones are Pure Lens Plus and Scleral Fill. The unbuffered ones are Lacropure and the inhalation solutions like Adipac, Majidose, and Mylan. Next, let's talk about size. So Pure Lens Plus is sold in boxes of either three or 12 four ounce bottles. That would be familiar to any of you who used to use Unisol 4 because it's the same size and the three packs are similar to the Unisol 4 three packs. Um, next is Scleral Fill. Those are sold in a box of 30 single-use vials of a 10 ml size, which is basically double the size of a Lacropure or an Adipac. Lacropure comes in a box of 98 5 ml vials. And then we've got all the inhalation salines, the Adipac and so on. The most familiar ones of those are 5 ml vials, uh, so the same volume as Lacropure, um, and they typically come in a box of 100. There is a 15 ml size of Majidose that comes in a box of 24. So here's what they all look like, and there you can kind of see the relative sizes. So what does the size matter? There are several reasons why you should care about the size of the container. First, we all use different quantities. I mean, there is a huge range of what people use. I know people who use the 3ml Adipac vials to fill both lenses and seem to have some left over. And then there's those of us on the other end of the spectrum. I know people who go through a, an entire bottle of Pure Lens every day. Um, so there's a vast range. There's also cost controls that people are concerned about. They wanna try and keep their costs down for salines. Reusability is a factor. None of the individual use vials are designed for recapping the way, say, your artificial tears, some of them might be recapable. Salines are not recapable. Um, and with the unbuffered ones, that's a good thing because you really don't want to keep them around anyway um, because those salines get more acidic after opening. Pure Lens Plus is the only one that's truly reusable because it is both buffered to keep the pH stable and it's packaged in a bottle with a safe cap on it. Uh, but how long you can keep it open is gonna vary depending on your doctor's advice. So in terms of which sizes to get, you just have to figure out in practice what size works best for you. Many people 
people, I've noticed just because we deal with all these saline's at the shop, many people get multiple types and they use them in different situations. You might have one to, for insertion and one for rinsing. You might have one for home and one for travel. So you can experiment, but do make sure you're talking to your doctor about this because there might be issues or needs specific to your medical situation. Um, in general, I think doctors tend to prefer the very smallest ones, like the lacropure and Adipac. And the reason for that is the smaller the vial, the faster you'll use it up, so the less likely you are to abuse the container, leave it around long enough that it will get contaminated. That really is a huge concern with anything that is preservative-free. Preservatives exist for a reason. Doctors don't want us putting our eyes at risk, especially when we've already had eye issues. You may never have had an eye infection before, uh, but you also really don't want to, and you can get them. You will be at higher risk if you are careless with preservative-free saline. Now let's talk about packaging features. Uh, each one of these types of saline's packaging has its pros and cons. Pure Lens Plus is unquestionably the most convenient and economical for those of us who use a lot of saline every day. It's also familiar to those of us who used Unisol 4. We were pretty used to those bottles. Uh, the one con of Pure Lens Plus is it does have to be discarded at some point after opening. The label says you can keep it up to 15 days and there's a nice handy place to mark on it when you opened it. Uh, but really, your doctor should be the one making the decision about how long you can safely keep it open. I know lots of people, especially pros users or transplant patients, who are on a 48-hour rotation with their Pure Lens bottles. Um, I know other people who go the full two weeks, and um, there's also, it has to be said, lots of people who go much longer than that. If you are going longer than that, don't unless you talk to your doctor about it, please. If you only use a little every day, Pure Lens Plus is probably not going to be the best one for you because you may just not use it up in that two-week period. However, um, I've been really excited about the new two-ounce bottle that's coming out from Pure Lens. That should be here pretty soon. Next, we've got Scleral Fill, the 10 ml vials. I love this product for travel. I love how it stands up on its own so I don't have to worry about the dropper getting dirty. I always used to use the 15 ml Majidose for travel, but that was an unbuffered type of saline, which just isn't ideal for me personally. So now I travel with scleral fill. I like the dropper on it. I think that um, it's very thoughtfully designed packaging. I think that people who tend to get bubbles in their lenses might be a little bit less likely to just because of the way the saline's dispensed with scleral fill. The con with scleral fill is it is so expensive. So for daily use, I think most of us tend to that use buffered salines tend to stick with pure lens and maybe keep some scleral fill around for travel. Next, we've got Lacropure from Menacon. I'm fond of this one because it's labeled specifically for this use. They were the very first ones to go out and do that, um, which is just great, as opposed to inhalation solution, which it's a, a, can be confusing for people looking at that packaging. The vial mechanism on the lacropyr vials, the, the little twist off thing is a little bit odd. Um, to look at especially, but they do work great. And the one of the things I do particularly like about it is that the plastic is softer. So for those who've got maybe a little arthritis or that find the pink files stiff and difficult to open, I think you would have an easier time with the lacropure vials. I also think they're a little bit easier to break apart when you've got that strip of them. Uh, con, they don't stand up. Then we have all the inhalation solutions. So that's the Adipac and Majidose and Mylan. Any of those things that says inhalation, whatever, whatever, 0.9% sodium chloride solution. Um, their virtues are that they are small and they are cheap. That's pretty compelling and they seem to serve the purpose for an awful lot of mainstream scleral lens users. Um, I'm not super fond of them personally, few reasons. The ones that have to be broken apart, um, and that would be Majidose, and I've also seen some Adipex like this, where they come in a strip and you have to break them apart. Breaking them apart, I've found I actually break the seal on more than one vial at a time. It's just really hard sometimes not to. Um, I really do worry with these ones that get just laid down horizontally. I worry about getting the tips dirty on my countertop. Um, of all of those, I like the Majidose 15 ml size the best. Uh, because it will stand up on its own, sort of like with the scleral fill. However, 15 mLs for some users is just way too much saline. So that's everything I have for you today about preservative-free saline brands. 
We have buffered and unbuffered. We have bottles and vials of all different sizes and types with their advantages and disadvantages. Next up will be shopping tips for purchasing preservative-free salines. Thanks for visiting the Dry Eye Shops YouTube channel. To reach us with questions or comments, please call or text the phone number on the screen or email service at dryeyeshop.com. Feel free to contact us with any questions or video topic suggestions. Additional resources are currently shown on the screen and they can also be found in the description box. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more Dry Eye Shop content.